Hello and welcome in a step driven by the Black Lives Matter movement in America. Consumer products major Hindustan Unilever or HUL said on 24 June that it was dropping the word fair from its brand Fair and Lovely in an attempt to rebrand its skincare range. Fair and Lovely, by the way, was introduced in the year 1975. Hindustan Unilever has said that it is committed to celebrate all skin tones and saying that fair, white and light suggest a singular ideal of beauty that the company was obviously not comfortable with. And earlier, even Johnson & Johnson announced plans to discontinue sale of its skin whitening cream. So this is clearly a movement. So the question we are asking is, what does this mean? And why is this happening today in India, despite the fact that there have been agitations and clamors for such a long time? To discuss this, I'm joined by two people who come from the world of advertising and journalism, including uh, focusing on the world of advertising. Uh, Anuradha Sengupta, broadcast journalist, anchor and editor of Media Dialogues in CNBC TV 18. Uh, earlier, uh, she was also part of a four member group that drafted guidelines for the uh, self-regulatory ad body Advertising Standards Council of India for skin lightening or fairness improvement products. This was some time ago. I'm also joined by Harish Bijur of Harish Bijur Consults, a private label consulting firm specializing in brand and business strategy. Thank you both for joining me. So let me uh, get a quick background uh, from both of you first. Anuradha, so why did this happen? Why did this happen, Govind? I'm not going to uh, try and even attempt to uh, explain the rationale for Hindustan Unilever stroke Unilever's move. I can't claim to have that kind of knowledge uh, or inside information. Uh, it seems to be, the timing of it seems to suggest that Black Lives Matter and the way that movement has just engulfed the, uh, America, Europe and other uh, you know European countries where there are large multiracial populations and of course America, uh, seems to be the time where everybody has has really gone in to take hard take a hard look at themselves and what they've been doing across businesses across sector sectors in response to the ferocity of this uh, ground up movement okay this common man's movement um so is the timing of it seems to suggest be a response to Black Lives Matter, but I don't know because uh, we do know for a fact that in the past few years, Hindustan Unilever has been working on, you know, shifting this positioning of the brand. There has been discomfort uh, as a result of strident and consistent criticism by activists. Harish, uh, you know, the question equally is why here in India? Now, this was has been an agitational issue for a long time. Many people have been complaining how much. So what's changing uh, underneath, if one can uh, say that, that a brand or a company like Levers is, uh, is uh, compelled to change uh, its positioning or its identity of a particular brand in this case after so many years? Okay, uh, Govind, actually the fact remains that the best of brands have uh, a shiny face, which is exterior, and uh, at times they have a soft underbelly. And uh, this is common not to Fair and Lovely alone, uh, but it's common to many a brand in the great Indian market. Uh, fundamentally, uh, why this decision now is the key question. Uh, if you really look at it, I think this should have been taken 20 years ago, if not 15, if not 10. Uh, but I think, you know, brands uh, kind of, you know, keep pushing uh, decisions. And I think that's exactly what happened with HUL in terms of pushing it till push came to shove. And hashtag Black Lives Matter. Uh, was the shot really. And I think uh, the decision was taken in a hurry. If you really look at it, I think, you know, the new brand name has not yet been announced. So uh, the mystery is what is the new brand name? I mean, if not fair and lovely, fair ampersand lovely, what is it? So when people ask me, I say, wait, ampersand, watch. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, rather. What, as if you were to look at it from the other side, and you've uh, sat on the board of the Advertising Standards Council of India, which is uh, uh, no, which is uh, put together to respond to such issues, you know, and uh, one of the things you looked at was the guidelines for, guidelines for skin lightening and fairness improvements products. So, uh, what was the advertising world trying to address, uh, and or rather the Advertising Standards Council uh, world trying to address that in in any way is addressed by a move like this? So, Govind, first, uh, quick clarification. Uh, I was not part of the board of the Advertising Standards Council of India. The Adver Advertising Standards 
Standard Council of India is a self-regulatory body that has members from the, uh, you know, of advertiser sure. agencies. Uh, they create something called a Consumer Complaints Council, which includes amongst representatives representatives from industry bodies, people like me at that time, um, a, a self-employed person who was an, uh, a civil society representative. Now, sure. from that body, uh, from that civil, uh, from that uh, Consumer Complaints Council, a group of four people, which included the ASCII chairman and the ASCII CEO, uh, we formed these guidelines now the the stimulus for that or that move was triggered by the fact that there was a lot of uh, criticism there were many complaints that ASCII was getting from people about the kind of brazenness and the blatant um, exploitative communication that fairness products were engaging in and uh, the the threshold of these complaints i mean you know it, there were really too many complaints that were coming in and the industry body given that it has representatives from advertisers and uh, marketers felt that they should take the lead and uh, try and regulate this because that is uh, after all, what a self-regulatory body does and what self-regulation is about. And right. they took it very seriously. And the the, the four there were three or four rules that we came out with as a result. And these have now become part of rules pertaining to this category. Right. So any any distinguishing, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, guidelines or uh, impact of guidelines that you can think. I mean, what changed? For instance, you came out with these guidelines and what happened? As in, did, was there any material impact on oh, the advertising that this was responding to? And absolutely. And all these brands took it very seriously, uh, starting with, uh, you know, market leader, fair and lovely. So you will notice, Govind, uh, in the older ads or ads before, for these six years, you would have a very sad face, uh, a, a dark skinned woman looking really sad and looking really depressed and looking really anxious. OK, and then the product intervention happens. So the before image is always of a person who's miserable and the after product image is always somebody who's completely on the other side of the happiness spectrum. OK, now that difference was a problem because by implication, all that communication suggests is that if it is because you're dark, you're that miserable. And that connection is really very, very, very deeply problematic. You know, I've written about this recently in first post and I've explained why it is so problematic. And um, th this, um, th so this, one of the rules that we came out with was to ensure that the before and after imagery right. um, uh, has to be similar so it can't be that i'm miserable and down in the mouth and really depressed and, you know and on the uh, just after the product use when i become fair i um, you know i look completely um, you know happy and right. absolutely delighted with life so that was a big key change and if you will notice all of the um, almost all the brands who follow the rules uh, have been doing this so you you don't have that very drastic, diametrically opposite, miserable and delighted imagery of pre and post product uh, use. So benefit is not communicated in such a stark manner. Um, that's right. one. The second thing that we did, um, actually, we didn't implement it because, uh, there, you know, we were told not to put that uh, in. Uh, so I was suggesting that we should look at the shade you know you see uh, the dark face and then the lighter face after product use and I was saying that look we should say that this is the color range with that illumination can happen and we should present describe it and of course you know I was things and I was told look that will not really go down so well it'll be very difficult to get people to follow and implement that but there are other rules within the ASCII code where you can catch people for misleading claims so if you say that by applying my product you will see a shade uh, uh, your skin will go 10 shades lighter that's a misleading claim and you can be you can hold those marketers to account on uh, on that count so, which is why we didn't do that. But the key key one for me is the imagery that was uh, addressed. Right. Okay. So th that was a good thing. Okay, uh, Harish, if you were to flip it around and look at from look at this from a consumer's point of view, uh, what's changed? I mean, do, will a consumer now buy the same product because it says 
just lovely, uh, which also is an extension of beauty because I did notice that, uh, and maybe one didn't notice these things earlier, that this was uh, sent out by uh, Sunny Jain, uh, President Beauty and Personal Care at, uh, at Hindustan Unilever. So it is beauty. Now that's uh, another uh, problem or concern in itself. But do consumers think differently today and would they appreciate this? Okay, this is a very contentious issue uh, because, you know, in marketing, you know, brands uh, have two approaches. Uh, one is a bottom-up approach and the bottom-up approach is all marketers represent the need, want, desire and aspirations of consumers. And therefore, brands get into the market, research things out, come back and say, this is what the consumer needs. And then adds on the wants as an additional wing, and then you add on a desire to say that I'm a marketer, I need to add on some desires to make it really exciting. And then let me look at what he or she might want as an aspiration. So the aspiration thing could be, could be very, 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 very uh, sensorial. And therefore, that is bottom up marketing. The second approach is really the top down marketing. And top down marketing says that marketer knows best marketer wants this to happen so if you really ask me i think you know the hashtag black lives matter and the decisions that have happened after that with the chill pulling out fair and lovely prior to that johnson and johnson setting the cat among the pigeons i think you know it is a very very important uh, phase in marketing life because what's really happening is there are two ways of marketing right one is opportunity driven marketing inverted commas, opportunity driven marketing. There is an opportunity for fairness screens in the market. There is a need for it. Let me add, 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 want, desire, aspiration and create it. And that's exactly what Fair and Lovely has done for the last 45 years. The second approach is really purpose driven marketing. And purpose driven marketing is all to say that, hey, listen, guys, we've done this for far too long. And this is not correct because this is colorism at its worst. And I think it's extremely critical to step in and say, we don't want colorism as an attitude in the Indian market. And this is top down. And to an extent, you know, this is an approach which says that marketer knows best, not consumer. Because the consumer might have that nudge wanting something, but then I've done all kinds of additions that made it what it is today. But out here, the battle is between two movements, and you'll see this going into other categories, okay? Other contentious categories, other socially ostracized categories. And that is to say, opportunity driven marketing is going to give way to purpose driven marketing. And I think that's exactly what's happening now. Okay, right. Uh, uh, Another last question. Uh, as you look ahead, uh, are, are there? Uh, do you see the need for similar uh, interventions in any other areas, particularly in the Indian context? Uh, you know, Govind, I'm. I don't know why you want to look ahead right now because we haven't even got any action on this promise that they've made so far, right? Right. We, what, what do we have on the table at this point of time? We have a statement of intent. OK, uh, a statement of intent with many which many people actually are uh, being extremely skeptical about. So they're like, hey, the product remains. So what is the big deal about the statement of intent that you make by just changing the name? A lot of other people believe that, hey, all these years when Indian activists and Indian society, you know, uh, many people in Indian society said this is rotten and you shouldn't be advertising like this and you should not have this product. There was no reaction. So we all we have right now is a statement of intent. What happens further? Let us just look at what Fair and Lovely does, what Unilever does. Now, so I'm not so cynical uh, only because I have interacted at different points in my working life with many people in Unilever. Harish just mentioned the word purpose-led. They do want to infuse their brands with purpose. Now, the question is, by infusing their brand Fair and Lovely with purpose, they may run the risk of uh, not being able to make as much money as they make of it. But that's not my concern as, uh, you know, as a journalist and as somebody 
who is part of Indian society and who has a deep problem with our hang uh, hang up and our aspiration for fair skin and white skin. And that is not because of beauty. Beauty, you can have any any kind, you know, you can like any uh, any shade of color and think it's beautiful. My problem is that being dark is associated with right. being you know, of a poor lower caste, uh, being from a poorer community and being dishonest or being criminal even. So my problem with fairness uh, or the aspiration for fairness is that not your individual right to choose that you prefer a fairer shade or a darker shade. Having said all this, if uh, Sunny Jain, who you quoted, if his statement has to come true, then uh, Fair and Lovely will have to really rework its imagery. And by that, I mean its communication, which means that you cannot have have a fair woman getting five shades lighter by the end of whatever the new name product will be. It will have to be dark-skinned women, brown-skinned women, wheatish women, pale yellowish women, and fair women, all of them glowing. You don't see different skin shades glowing, do you? You only see the white or fair skin glowing. Now, that communication, I have no idea how they will do, but if they do, and that is what I'm going to look ahead to, not anything else beyond it at this point, Govind. Right. Right, and fair point, Anuradha. Thanks for that. Uh, Harish, uh, last word. Uh, uh, more interventions uh, should we, I mean, since the movement is now begun uh, and, and there is a clamor for change, what else should we be looking at? Well, assuming. Firstly, I'm really looking at uh, fair and lovely and trying to see that if the brand name is going to be uh, something ampersand lovely, because if it is going to be that, then I think one is playing it very, very safe as a company, okay? And the company has a right to play safe because the key question is, is it only a purge of a word called fair and white and everything concerned to that? Or is it a real change? Is it semantic wordplay? Or is it going to be real? For instance, you could have the new brand Dash and Lovely in the same font, with the same color of packaging, with the same backgrounds, with the same fine letterings, in the same kind of a carton, with the same kind of an inner tube, and with advertising, which is different. But if that's it, you know what? It's very simply uh, going to be a game of semiotics and semantics. Semiotics is that science which all of us work with, where we tend to say that a consumer wants to pick up something, he must not make up the difference between one and the other. So changing one little gold line on the pack is a sin and a crime. So let's, so I'm really watching and waiting and saying, is it going to be dash ampersand lovely? And is it going to look the same at distribution? Because the game is won at the point of distribution, Logan. Because when a consumer goes to the shop, he looks at the pack, the packs, the new packs are going to be stacked in the same counter, uh, in the same place where the old one used to be stacked. It looks more or less the same. So with a semantic uh, change, uh, but not a semiotic change. So I'm looking for all this. So I think it's very exciting. And I think, you know, uh, let's wait and watch. Right. Right. Uh, uh, and, and that's a good note to end on. Let's look forward to uh, what the change is and let's hope the change is real and meaningful and has a definitive impact and reflects the reason for which all of this uh, is happening. Uh, Anuradha Sengupta and Harish Pujo, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Govind. Bye.